Hello everybody, thank you so much for clicking on another video. I'm here to bring you stories of the motherland. And today our beautiful guest is Kimba. Hi. I'm so happy to be here. How I'm so you? happy to, ha to have you in our store and thank to have you, you back in the motherland. Yeah. <laughs> this is beautiful and amazing. I mean, if I can only look at this dress, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna get married. <laughs> So let's start from the beginning because I'm sure you cannot just accomplish this by a second, right? Right. So who is Kinda? Where are you born? Where are you from? Okay, so Kinda is a Lebanese. I am a Lebanese Ghanaian. I originate in Ghana. My great grandmother is from Akumfi, Cape Cod. Oh, Post. so you're Ghanaian? Yes. Wow, I didn't know. Are you serious? I didn't know. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> Yes, so oh, my cool. great grandmother is from Cape Coast, mm -hmm. from South Pond, okay. where Fanti okay. originally. Okay, so my grandfather moved here. I'm talking like I'm taking you way back. Mm -hmm. So my grandfather moved here for work and he met my grandmother and generations on generations. My father grew up here. I was born in Lebanon and I moved here when I was a few months. Okay. I grew up in Ghana, schooled in Ghana went out to do university in Lebanon and I just moved back around 11 months ago but I was always in and out Ghana is home for me yeah, so yeah I can imagine so yeah. which school did you go to I was in Ghana International School GIS okay. Okay. yeah so I was there up until grade 10 mm -hmm. and then I went out to do two years freshman and then college okay yes because you're a very diverse entrepreneur mm -hmm. there's clothes there is creams there is beauty what do you all do Okay, so HK is the brand and HK started off on a journey that was quite interesting because as I evolved, the brand also evolved. So I started the brand when I was 20, okay. 19, 20, 20, when I was in uni. I was in an art school. I'm an art student and I used to love creating pieces. So I started with customizing my own t-shirts and creating my own unique pieces. Oh, nice because um, there was something that I didn't like in university there is that in college, we had all the girls wearing the same clothes, like we're all in Zara or we're all in H&M or we're all in. So, yes. you know, I felt like that was, I didn't like that. And being an expressive person, I always was exploring. So one summer I moved back to Ghana and I was like, I need to buy clothes. And you know, back then, like we're talking like seven, eight years ago, there wasn't there weren't much options like online was not booming and uh you know there were very selective stores so there was actually a, a seamstress by the house and i decided to go buy some fabrics and sketch out some pieces and create with her and that's when i discovered who hk was oh, wow. and that's how it began so 20 yes that's like wow mm -hmm. that's so good and that was the era of instagram so i started yeah. creating collections just for myself it wasn't a like i didn't think of it as a business okay. you know i was in uni and my main focus was studying and all that so after um i created my first collection i posted it on instagram just like showing people about the fabric i even remember i created a skirt with this exact print oh, nice. and uh, it was something unique for them because they had never seen such patterns and i used to write about like what each fabric meant and the symbols so it was very interesting for a few people and it gained you know some attention that I got a call once from um, a Tripoli Fashion Week and they were doing a, they were having a fashion show uh, collection like in a very important area in Lebanon. So um, I just went for it and that was how, that's literally how Fusion was wow. Wow. born. Wow. Yeah, I, so I first created, the first collection was called Fusion. And it was about, you know, fusing the cultures of my Ghanaian heritage with the touch of the Lebanese. Yeah. yeah. yeah so that's how it started. Oh, wow. Yeah. Because I follow you on Instagram and sometimes I see you just sketching a dress within seconds and I'm like, what? Yeah. Wow. So I that's love years it. of experience that mm. you just did it as a hobby and then turn it into a business. Yes. Wow. That's beautiful. You know, sometimes opportunities are laid in front of you and you don't really see the purpose of it just yet. But once you follow it and you start to feel that it, it's making you happy, mm -hmm. you kind of just have to follow through with it and see where it takes you. So that's that's how we evolved. Wow. So there's bridal dresses. I'm seeing evening gowns. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing African clothes. Please explain the collection. Okay. So HK, the brand, started off with casual wear. Okay. It was t-shirts, customizing t-shirts. As I'm a graphic designer, I started just customizing t-shirts and all that. 
since um, it was what I knew. As the brand grew and as I graduated, I knew that I wanted to open a, a physical location for the brand as it was getting, you know, we were online at first. Okay. People were ordering and all that happened. And once I realized that this is what I wanted to do, I started developing it. That's when I created a business plan and started to take it more like a business than just, you know, creating pieces for myself. Mm -hmm. So um, once we started with the customizing t-shirts, it, it evolved into the African collection, inspire, like in, in including the print into the pieces in little ways, in big skirts, maxi skirts, maxi dresses. And it just continued to evolve. And step by step, after having the store, I had a client who really liked my work. And she was getting married. And she was like, will you make my wedding dress? So your store was somewhere else? My, store, my first store is in Lebanon. Oh, this is our okay, second okay, location. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. So our first store was in Lebanon. And yeah. since I had designed a few pieces for her. And they like the African print. Oh, they love it. Oh, they that's so love nice. it. Yes, okay. they love it. They love okay. first. A lot of people were like, oh, it's a lot of colors. Mm -hmm. But you know when Dolce and & Gabbana and Prada yes. and all these brands, these huge started brands started using, colors, using yeah. colors and print and even some of them, the same batik and African print, mm, yes. it was a trend. Oh, so they okay. all, people from all around Lebanon would come to my boutique wow. in Lebanon to wow. buy these unique pieces. Okay. So that was how the brand, the brand really, yeah. yes. And it started with a wedding dress. So Somebody it started with a client who yeah. liked, you know, the work and the, the service. You know, it's all about service as well. You know, how you deal with your clients and all that. And she was so happy with the service that she was like, I want you to do my wedding dress. And I was like, you know, I've never done a wedding dress, right? She was like, but you can do it. I was like, oh, definitely I can do it. Mm -hmm. So I feel like also with creating a brand, you also have to really believe in yourself. And I knew and I still believe this is only the beginning. Yes, this is definitely only the beginning because when customers put that trust in you, mm -hmm. it truly like gives you that confidence, that extra confidence that you need that really prove, you have to prove yourself mm -hmm. in ways that you know you can perform. Mm -hmm. So that was really um, a big opportunity for me that I definitely jumped on. And we designed her wedding dress and it was, it was a beautiful dress. And we posted it on our Instagram stories and that's how we started to get more inquiries of evening gowns, made to measure and bridles. That's how it all, but it all happened gradually. It wasn't like a, you know, and I never thought like, that's what I wanted to do. It was yeah. just following through with the process. Yeah. So that's how. So that's why you said the brand is evolving with you. Absolutely. And that's so beautiful. So how do you manage, because you're a mom as well, mm -hmm. you're a wife, you're an entrepreneur, and you have business in two different countries. How do you do it all? First and foremost, the team. The team is number one. You know, if it wasn't for my incredible team in Lebanon and even here and the support, you know, the family support and friends and the support that I have is really helped, really helped grow the brand mm -hmm. and allowed me to even take these steps. This is even what brought me here to Ghana. Mm -hmm. Because um, because Ghana's home, right? This is where your family is. This is where my family is. Okay. Ghana is home, mm -hmm. but my husband is not Ghanaian. So for, to bring him down here, you know, he always loved, he loves Ghana. Like he would, you know, every time we come here, he enjoys it and all that. But we never thought we would move back. Mm -hmm. So when COVID happened, this was a blessing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Things became a little shaky. Well, Lebanon's dealing with a lot of, oh, you know, yeah, economic yeah. crisis and all that. And it's a tough time in Lebanon. So we were looking to explore other options and mm -hmm. moving to the States. And since he's American and all that. And uh, we found that maybe, you know, Ghana has a lot of potential yeah. Yeah. and Ghana is growing and the economy is booming, even though it is a very expensive country to live in, um, that people forget it's, it's, it's also a country that you can explore. And as yeah. an entrepreneur, I think also the family support and my husband being very supportive of my dreams, you know, has helped. So is he here now? He's in Ghana. Oh, that's yes. so nice. He's in Ghana. So everybody came. Yes, we're all here wow. now and wow. we're all trying to make this dream continue. Yeah, he yeah. helps me. He's very involved in the business, okay. in the business side with like the managerial and accounting and all that. So he's very much involved in the oh, business nice. as well. Very nice. Yes, yes, yes. So what, what is the HK Beauty? Where did that come from? Okay, so <laughs> since generations... Shea butter has been used in our family. Like whenever someone is coming to Lebanon, they're getting shea butter for us. You know, the family always uses shea butter. We use it on scars. We use it as beauty. We use it for our hair. We've always used it in our family. 
So the the Shea Butter brand actually started was started by my sister. Okay. She started this brand in Lebanon, and uh, it was called Body Butters, and it did really well. It was doing really well, and she had to leave due to the crisis and all that. She had to leave to Australia, and she didn't want the brand to die. So she's like, put it under your brand and let's grow it. Yeah. So just as a structure of HK, since it became um, like the mother brand, and then we have sub brands, yeah. we have it all intertwined. But she's very much involved in oh, that's so the shield nice. butter. So it's basically your family business yes. because your husband is helping you, your sister is helping you. I know about your dad who's also here, right? Is yes. he also involved? Or so the funny thing own? that I recently found out is, I don't know if you've heard of Saint Jose. I don't know. Okay, research about Saint Jose. Okay. He's a very known fashion designer in Ghana. Like, And my dad was partners with him a long time ago, like in the, I don't know if it was in the 70s or something. They used to do fashion shows. They had a store in Osu. Mm. So my dad's always been in the fashion industry. Okay. They had a store called Brass. Okay. Maybe the older generation would know mm-hmm. that store. So they've been very into the fashion industry okay. since. And my dad's a very stylish guy. He I've loves <laughs> he loves fashion. Yeah. So I think it's in the blood. Okay. I think it runs okay. through the blood. Yeah. And what about your mom? My mom. My mom is a very creative person. She actually does these beads. She uses African beads and she's a jewelry designer. Yeah. And she creates all the accessories that are under the brand. Wow. Mm-hmm. So HK is a whole group of people, but you yes. got a face of it. So nice. So, so very nice. <laughs> so what is like raising a family in Ghana? Because I had troubles. I had to rush home. Yeah. I'm missing Ghana so much. Yeah. So what were, come, what were some of the troubles that you were facing? Just oh. to see if my troubles <laughs> are similar. So I think my husband uh, wasn't used to coming to Ghana like your husband. Right. So that was a difficulty for him. Mm. He had a lot of challenges with um, finding genuine friends. Mm. I think trusting people. And then having issues with housing each and every day that broke him mm. so i think that was difficult for him mm-hmm. and for my kids the schooling part that was so difficult for them to yeah, find a, yeah, that... a good school where they feel safe and where it's also in the per- perimeter that they don't have to be in traffic that much right so that i think were my biggest right. issues yeah. right right i think you've tapped on a lot of issues that are very important yeah. but um you know my my experience since it's only been 11 months like we're yet to hit the one year yeah. but um, my son's young so he was in he's in a preschool mm-hmm. he just recently started and he's liking it you know I think there's a big lack of activities you know it's like you do beach you do this you do that but you always have to kind of keep them entertained yeah. so I think this is one aspect that always keeps me on the go it's like you're trying to balance work But at the same time, you want to give them experiences too. Not just, you know, it's not all about work. It's all about also living and enjoying the environment that you're in and all that. So we do a lot of beach. We do a lot of activities at home and stuff. Um, There have been a lot of challenges with finding like a stable, like my husband is still exploring opportunities here in Ghana. So I feel like there's a lot of challenges in that too. But um, I think Ghana is, on the rise i truly believe that and i truly believe that there is a lot of potential with services 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 because it's such a big lack like there's such a big gap that hasn't been filled with services but um, with balancing work and family one thing i do that personally has helped a lot is actually scheduling it i don't know if you've ever tried doing that but like From this time to this time, since my schedule is kind of like, you know, yes, and like with appointments and with work and all that. So I kind of schedule the time like today when I get home from this time to this time, it's just quality time with my son. Mm. From this time to this time, it's quality time with my husband. Because if you don't balance it out, Mm. you will find yourself lost, like not really having that quality time with your with your family. So actually just how you say, okay. Today at work, I'm going to do this task from this time to this time. I do that as well with the family. Mm. Or that way you'll feel like time is flying. In Ghana, really, time flies. I don't know what it is. It's different, though. You feel like you have so much time in the world because everything is easy. Right. But then once you do maybe one or two things in a day, it's It's, already nice. Exactly. Like, even once you leave the house and you come back, like, your day is over. Like, that's it. So it's very hard to Mm. find yourself lost in that cycle. 
Yeah, but I think it takes time. You know what's funny? Even though I grew up here, mm -hmm. and Ghana to me is home. Like Ghana to me is more home than you know Lebanon or any other country. And it was hard settling in. It wasn't mm -hmm. easy. Even though you would think, oh, you know, let's jump on it, and yeah. it's not that easy. It's not that easy, I even though it's home. Life in Ghana is much more easy absolutely, than absolutely, life. absolutely. But once you establish everything and you have your business, you have yes. your house, you yes. have a good school, it takes time. Beautifully. Yes, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I, I, I think you know, for those of us that grew up here, we're very blessed to have grown up in Ghana. Mm -hmm. You know, outdoors and. I think it was mm. a nice childhood that I was, was happy to have my son experience. Mm. Yeah. So do you speak any local language? I do understand. Oh, so cool. sometimes I go places and, you know, hey, open it, and I'm like, mm, mm -hmm. you know, and I understand, yeah, but I just, I play it cool. Yeah, yeah, I <laughs> but I do think I should learn. Mm -hmm. I should, at least a little. My so husband my is actually language. learning, which is, oh, wow. yeah, he, he loves languages. Oh, so. that's so nice. Mm. My thing is, I get shy when I, so I'm also quiet, and yeah. then I'm, when I walk out, I will say like, I will say, okay, my dad, so then they know yeah, that I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then, then they start a whole conversation. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm like, no, 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 that's the only yeah, thing that I do. Yeah, 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 it happens. Okay, mm. okay. But it's good that you understand. Yeah, well. definitely. I mean, I grew up here. I have to have, you know, yeah. at least picked up a few things. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. So do you raise your son more in a Lebanese way or more in a Ghanaian way? What do you think? Mm -hmm. I don't believe there's a Lebanese way or a Ghanaian way. Mm -hmm. I just have strong family core morals and values that I, you know, use. Mm -hmm. um, we're very family oriented. So, you know, family is very important. Yeah. I don't believe that there's a specific, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know. Is there a difference? Because I, I still don't mm -hmm. understand why are there so many Lebanese people in Ghana? What is the, is there a connection anyway? There absolutely is a connection. Okay. You know, Lebanon is also a very easygoing country. Yeah. Um, the culture is very laid back, mm -hmm. you know. So would you say it's similar? I would say it's similar since, you know, Ghanaians and Lebanese both love life. Mm -hmm. You know, you when you when you visit Lebanon, well, mm -hmm. when Lebanon was, you know, okay. all good, yeah. You find everyone celebrating, everyone's happy, they're good vibes. So I do believe there are similarities. Okay. So that's funny. Yeah. I'd love to visit one. Yes, you would love it. Oh, nice. You would love it. Nice. Yes. Lebanon is really a beautiful country. Yeah. So is Ghana. Like to me, Ghana is. Those two. Yeah. Are those are my top. Very mm -hmm. nice. So let's talk a bit about having a, a business here because mm -hmm. I think a physical business is one of the hardest things to run. Right. Because of the lack of mostly understanding, dealing with Ghanaian state, mm -hmm. I think they still need a lot of training. So mm -hmm. how do you handle that? How do you cope that? In my kind of industry, since it's more of a personal relationship, I feel like here in the store, we, we focus on building relationships. Mm -hmm. So the more you actually understand the client's needs is when we can really meet the client's needs. Mm -hmm. So. For us, for us in this store right now, it's not about just selling. It's about really helping the client feel confident and empowered in the pieces that they buy. Not that they just buy a piece and that's it. No, we really want to make sure like if they're buying or wearing our brand, it has to really look good on them. And they have to really feel good on them because, you know, the power that clothing has on your mood yeah. and on your physical like confidence it really boosts it. Like when you feel good, when you look good, you feel good. Yeah, yeah. That's that's just the way it is. Do so you think that is one of the reasons that you have come so far? Because mm -hmm. I think there are lots of fashion designers in Ghana. But, okay, my experience with a few of them mm -hmm. has just been, they'll make something that looks similar to what you wanted. Mm -hmm. But when you tell them, it's not exactly how I want it, can you please change it? Oh, my God, but this is so, so nice. It was so mm -hmm. good on you. So that, <laughs> we don't use that method. That. We don't okay. use that method at all. As I was saying, you know, mm -hmm. when you come here, you get what you want. Yeah. You don't get what we give you. Mm -hmm. So it's all about meeting the client's needs. And mm -hmm. with the service industry, like even this business, it's, it's all about the service. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, if you come in here to buy a T-shirt, if you like the service, you're going to come back. Mm -hmm and buy a yeah. dress and then you're going to come back and you're going to bring other people mm -hmm. so it's all about how you treat your clients yeah. and for especially the bridal i feel like the this is really where the difference is going to be made because there is no 
bridal store internationally that you go to that you really want to feel like a princess. You mm-hmm. really want to feel pampered. You really want to feel like you're getting that treatment. And I think that's a big mm-hmm. thing that I'm focusing on in Ghana. So yeah. once you come in here, into the store, into our space, you bring your bridesmaids, you bring your mom. So it's all about giving that experience. Mm-hmm. Very important. Yes, nice. extremely exp- important because you plan on getting married once. So mm-hmm. enjoy it's the experience. Special, yeah. Yes, oh, yes, yes, good. yes. So if you look at the future, let's say five years from now, mm-hmm. when do you see yourself and the brand and your family? Honestly, <laughs> I don't know exactly where, you know, I, I do believe Ghana will always and forever be a base. Mm-hmm. I do have plans on opening in Dubai next. Oh, wow. Yes, we do plan on opening another branch. We do plan on growing more. We do plan on getting our name on a more international scale. We are already shipping internationally. We've targeted a few countries and we've been able to reach that so with the brand goals definitely definitely just pushing more on the bridal and evening gowns in a sustainable way I don't know if um, I told you about the rental that we have in Ghana so all our gowns we have a section that is for selling and we have a section that's for rental so let's say someone has an occasion and they want a luxurious dress but they don't want to pay thousands of dollars on it because our gowns range from five hundred dollars above so they could come in and rent a dress for two three hundred dollars a beautiful gown yes yes and as a sustainable brand we care about also you know trying to make use of the dresses, not that one look and then you put it in the closet. Yeah. So even the dresses can be worn, some of our dresses can be worn in two, three ways. Mm, yes. Wow, that's yes. a very yes. good thing. Mm-hmm. Okay, nice. Very nice. So where can people find you and what exactly can they come for? So at the HK Boutique, inside the Marriott, you find our casual wear, you find our skincare, you find the bridles and the evening gowns. So we've kind of situated ourselves in the core heart of Accra, where you can find all that HK does in one location. We would love to see more of you. And hopefully, <laughs> when I finally get my wedding, okay, this is so like you. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I'll put Kidna's information all down below. And see you in the next one. Bye.